preach that on another night, but I just feel the Lord tugging us, starting with Brother Ronnie, tugging us in a specific direction. And so if you want to, uh, gentlemen, if you want to um, just stay where you're at, you want to sit on the floor. I see some sitting on the floor, ladies, wherever you feel comfortable, but we're, we're not going to go into uh, an official sermon. If you could just continue to play, Sister Michaela, that would be great. And Mr. Jordan, just stay close. We're gonna, we're not, don't get too comfortable in your seats, please. That's not what I'm intending. Um, we're gonna start praying in just a, a second again, so you might make your way back to this altar. But I feel the Lord calling us deeper tonight. And I feel that some of us need to re-evaluate our relationship with Him. We need to reassess why God wants us. We need to reanalyze why we live for God. I'm going to read just a scripture. Book of Mark chapter 3 verse 13. And he went up on the mountain and called to him, speaking of Jesus, those he himself wanted ha. if Jesus called you it's because he wants you sometimes we think yeah he died on the cross he loves everybody he called me by obligation I'm just part of a line or a lineage of preachers or I didn't really have anything else to do I, I didn't have any other talents I, I didn't really have anywhere else to be on a Wednesday night but if God called you whether you're whether you've been in church for 20 years uh, or it's your first time visiting tonight let me tell you that Jesus Christ called you first and foremost because he wants you not what you can do for him not what he can accomplish out of you but because he wants you listen to this and this is so convicting even to myself in verse 14 it says then he speaking of Jesus appointed 12 listen to why he appointed 12 we know all the works that the 12 did we know that they cast out devils we know that they preached great messages we know that they were the leaders of the church and they turned the world upside down but listen to the initial reason for why he called them listen then he appointed 12 that they might be with him. Before he sends them out, before he, and the passage goes on to say they went out to preach and they went out to heal the sick and they went out to cast out demons and they went on to make other disciples. But before you do all of that, before you go and cast the devils out, before you teach a Bible study or preach a great message, before you do any of that, I've called you to be with me. Sometimes we get, up, get so caught up in doing things for God that we forget that he is our shield. He told Abraham, I've, I've got a lot of promises for you, Abraham. I've got a lot of great things I'm going to make of you a great nation. I'm going to, all the world shall be blessed by your seed. I'm going to tell you, there, there are some great promises when you live for God. There's some great power and ministry to uphold. But he told Abraham, none of that is what this is all about. He said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I read about the Levites in the Old Testament and the Levites were the priests and the ministers. So if you are called to ministry tonight, I think this, this principle is very applicable that Moses and Joshua were divvying out the land for all the tribes of Israel and, and one tribe got this area and another tribe got that area. But he spoke to Levi and he said, Levi, you're gonna serve before the Lord. That's going to be your job. You're gonna stand in the temple and you're going to experience the presence of God. And it says this, Levi, you're not going to receive a physical inheritance. He said, because the Lord will be your inheritance. What if our prayer tonight, God, was God more, like the song said, and to just 
convicted me. This has been the prayer of my heart. I, I've listened to this song more, more times than I can count. What if our prayer tonight, God, more than anything you can give me, more than any accomplishment, more than any ministry opportunity, more than any relationship, more than any financial miracle, Lord, if you don't do any of that, I, I think it'll just be okay. If you don't answer any of those prayers, I, I guess I'll be able to get along, but there is one prayer that you have to answer tonight. There is one prayer that I'm not going to leave uh, until I get a hold of, and that's I want a hold of you. I can't leave this place uh, until I'm closer to you. Uh, I can't leave this place uh, until I get that breakthrough uh, where the prayer begins to flow again, uh, where our conversation uh, between one another is restored. Uh, that place of love uh, and that place of intimacy uh, and that place of relationship uh, where it's only you and me, God. Uh, I'm not worried about anything else. He called his 12 uh, because he wanted relationship. Uh, he created Adam in the garden uh, because he wanted relationship. Uh, he called out the Israelites uh, because he wanted relationship. Uh, he called out the church uh, because he wanted relationship. God is willing to risk everything for somebody that'll walk in relationship. There's some people say that God's biggest focus in this world is souls, and I don't think that is true. I think God as an intense focus on souls. I think God cares about souls, uh, but I read about the days of Noah and God withheld his judgment from the world because there was a man named Enoch that walked with God. He said, I will spare this wicked world because I have a relationship with Enoch. And I believe in these last days, it says this, it says that in the last days, when the Son of Man is about to appear, it's going to look similar like it did to the days of Noah. Men's heart will be continually evil. They will, they will imagine devices and ways uh, to twist evil things and their heart and their thought are continually on evil things. But I believe in the midst of all the evil, in the midst of all the wickedness, there's gonna be some people that's gonna have the spirit of Enoch on them and say, I will walk with God. And the Bible says that Enoch walked with God and he pleased God and he pleased God to the point where God said, Enoch, I can't stand to have you on this earth any longer. I can't stand to keep you there. I've got to translate you. And the Bible says he was not for God took him. I want my relationship with God to be so intact that he'll move heaven and earth, he'll withhold judgment, he'll do whatever it takes uh, because he is so invested in his relationship with me. If you want to see miracles and signs and wonders, uh, I think that's all good. Uh, but before you do any of that, uh, make sure that you be with him. It's what he's all about. This is a, the cry of his heart. This is his desire. The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I believe my opinion, Brother Abrego, you don't call a person a that. You don't call an individual a that. I believe Jesus came because he wanted to restore that relationship where man and God walked in the cool of the day. I just want to tell somebody tonight, God called you and he brought you here tonight because he wants you. hear the words of Solomon in his in his book called the Song of Solomon and it's I believe it's a type of God's love for his church and he says come away with me my beloved come away with me would you get away from everybody else for a little while and would you spend time with me would you put everything else on hold for tonight and spend time with me would you ignore everything else that's demanding and dragging your attention on a constant basis it's work it's school it's relationship it's people it's worry but God I hear his, I hear his voice calling tonight will you come away 
with me. It's why I came. It's why I died. He didn't die so you and him could have a transactional relationship. He didn't come and die so you could have a cohabitation with the Lord. I see relationships and I see marriages uh, where yeah, at one time there was intimacy, at one time there was passion, at one time there was love, but through the course of life they just simply become cohabitants. They live under the same roof, but there's no love there they live under the same roof but there's no honesty there's no communication there is no trust and and there's a statistic that says that 50 percent of all divorces or marriages end in divorce and and that's what i believe but what i'm more worried about is the 50 percent that stay together and there's no love in that relationship and yes there are people that backslide there are people that walk away from god there are people that leave the church but what i'm more worried about are the people that sit on a pew and there's no more love there's no more relationship and there's no more intimacy with him I hear him calling lifeline tonight I hear him calling every person in this building would you come away would you spend time with me would you fellowship with me that's all he wants that's all he wants of us tonight he doesn't need you to be perfect he doesn't need you to have it all together he just needs you to be open, to be honest, to be transparent, not worry about what you're gonna do after, not worry about what people are gonna think about you or how long it's been since you've been in church or how long it's been since you've gotten a breakthrough. Forget about all of that and just get away with him tonight. I feel the Lord speaking to somebody's heart. Could you just lift your hands in the building? I told you I wasn't gonna speak for very long. Come on, someone's letting shame and condemnation keep you from the presence of God. Someone is letting fear and apathy keep you from the presence of God. It's holding you back from what God wants to do in your life tonight. Hallelujah. I want to say one more thing. If you want to find, I encourage you to, to, to get out of your seat. Get, find a place to pray. Find a place to get alone with God. And as you're doing that, I'm going to say one thing. I'm going to reiterate what is read in verse 14. He appointed the 12 that they might be with him. Remember, your first calling isn't to preach. Your first calling isn't to sing. Your first calling isn't to teach Bible studies. Your first calling isn't to be involved in media. Your first calling is not to be involved in outreach. Your first calling is to be with Him. If you mess up in every area of ministry, don't let this one go to waste. Don't let this one fall by the wayside. If you are, if you lack excellence in other areas of ministry, uh, God is patient, he'll work with you, but let this be the area that you are excellent in. God, I don't have time to pray for needs today. God, I don't have, I only have 30 minutes to pray today. I, I don't have an hour or two. I, I can't really get to the needs part of today. I've got to spend this first 30 minutes just being with you. I'm feel, I feel the call of the Holy Ghost tonight that God is looking for a generation that want Him more than what He can do for you. Would you find a place? Would you get out of your seat? Would you find a wall? Find, find somewhere on the mats to pray? Well, let's get alone with Him tonight. I feel the call of the Holy Ghost. Let's, let's get alone with Him tonight. Let's get caught up in his presence tonight. Let's get lost in that love of God that doesn't fail. That place where the peace of God that passes all understanding.